In the second century, there was a flood gate that was open and tons of false books started pouring into the church communities. These are known as the New Testament Apocrypha, which are books that did not make it into the Bible because these books are false. And one of the things is that they ascribe the, the name of each letter or book to one of the apostles who had passed away a long time ago. So these books not only are false, but they're forgeries. And they were not accepted into the canon of Scripture for the simple fact that they're totally false. But what was in these writings? And why did they flood in the 2nd and 3rd century? Why did they flood into the church communities? What was so important? Who was trying to teach other things apart from the doctrine of the apostles of the 1st century? Let's find out. The Didache is a false book. Can we trust it? No. The, name of, the real name of it was the teaching of the Twelve, but not one single apostle had anything to do with this writing. Important to note. The Gospel of Thomas, where Jesus endorses the Trinity and nude baptism. Notice, both of these things were practiced by the Catholic Church. The Acts of Peter, Peter endorses Trinity baptism. If you look through the book of Acts, Peter never baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Gospel of Philip talks about the Eucharist. And of course, the only people using this uh, in their communion were the Catholic, the Catholic Church. Proto-Gospel of James teaches that Mary never lost her virginity. She's still a virgin, and that's why they call her the Virgin Mother. But this is not what the Bible teaches. This was taught by Ignatius of Antioch in the 2nd century. And we ask the question, was it Ignatius who wrote the Proto-Gospel of James to prove his false doctrine? The first epistle of Clement to the Corinthians, Pope Clement, he teaches an apostolic succession, which is something that the early church did not do, but the Catholics did until this very day. I'm going to confine my teaching today to only a couple of themes, but there are many themes that we can look at in the New Testament Apocrypha. But the first one that I want to look at is Trinity Baptism. It says in the Didache, baptized in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, but if you have neither running water or still water, then it says pour water on the head three times in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why is this important? Because baptism in the New Testament is not to baptize three times, and it's not to pour water on the head. There was someone who was changing the baptism slowly. And in the 2nd and 3rd century, we find that certain bishops already started practicing this, baptizing three times, first in three immersions, and then it changed to pouring. And as we know today, the Catholic Church sprinkles or pours water on the head three times. So the Apocrypha New Testament Didache was teaching something that is practiced by the Catholic Church. And then the Acts of Peter says, Peter led himself down by a rope and baptized them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So as you can see, the Acts of Peter is also an Apocrypha New Testament book, and it also alludes to baptism in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why is it that these books are false, yet they're teaching Catholic doctrine. You have to answer that yourself. I have already uh, answered that in my heart, but you need to answer that. And then listen to this one, the Coptic Gospel of Thomas. It says, Jesus said, where there are three gods, they are gods. Where there are two or one, I am with him. 
This is the Apocrypha book of the Gospel of Thomas saying that Jesus believed in a trinity. He believed in three gods or two gods and he was with them. But the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that Jesus uh, was in one uh, in accordance with the Shema of Israel as is recorded in Mark 12, 29. We know that from Scripture. Jesus never alluded to a trinity. So here you have the apocryphal books of the New Testament teaching Catholic doctrine in the 2nd and 3rd century at the same time that the Catholic fathers were starting their religion. It's at the same time that this book started flooding. Interesting. Now, one of the things that we know, because Hippolytus, the Bishop of Rome, told us in his writings that they baptized three times, three immersions, and in the nude. Now, is that found in the Apocrypha? Listen to this. Jesus said, When you disrobe without being ashamed, and take up your garments and place them under your feet like little children, and thread on them, then you will see the Son of the Living One, and you will not be afraid. I find that over many books of the Apocrypha New Testament, you will find the theme of baptizing in the nude. So this is a Catholic theme that was practiced in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. Wow. And then the, this one, the Gospel of Philip. The Eucharist is Jesus, where they call him in Syrac, Far Risata, which is the one who is spread out. So the Gospel of Philip, which is a false gospel, is teaching the Eucharist. Wow. And then what about the, one of my favorite ones is the Proto-Gospel of James, where it talks about this. Well, let me read it. Then Salome inserted her finger in order to examine her condition. And she cried out, Woe to me for my sin and my faithlessness, for I have put the living God to the test, and see my hand is burning, falling away from me. In other words, Salome put her finger inside Mary to check if she was still a virgin. And when she found out that she was, she was scared and crying out to God. Of course, this is a false book, the Proto-Gospel of, of James. It's an Apocrypha New Testament uh, false book. And so what's being promoted here? The ever virginity of Mary, which was espoused by Ignatius of Antioch. Could it be that, that Ignatius of Antioch also wrote the Proto-Gospel of James to prove what he believed? I'll let you think about that. Very interesting. And I'll give you one more. It says, uh, uh, And afterwards they added a codicil to the effect that if these should die, other approved men should succeed them in the ministry. This is the letter of Clement, first letter of Clement, which is talking about apostolic succession. As you can see, I can go on and on, but the Apocrypha New Testament has a lot of Gnostic ideas, yes, but it is filled with Catholic doctrine that is even practiced today. So that leads you to believe, leads me to believe, that the people who were writing these false books were the Catholics themselves. And if you disagree with me, tell me why in your comments. But this really shows us something. I'm talking about not just these themes that I mentioned, there's a lot more. But the Trinity, Trinity Baptism, Baptism in the nude, the Eucharist, the ever-Virgin Mary, and the apostolic succession. All these are believed today by the Roman Catholic Church. So it means that the Roman Catholic Church is the Apocrypha Church of the New Testament. See, the Apocrypha Church of the 2nd and 3rd century.